Well, well, today I'm gonna talk about the uh, current final installment of the Rocky franchise, uh, the, at least the main series um, so far. Um, Rocky Balboa. Um, I don't know how many of you um, uh, have watched uh, James Rolfe stuff, um, <clears throat> like Angry Video Game Nerd, and see his uh, reviews and thoughts on various movies. But um, you know, he's a big uh, Rocky fan, and um, I believe he even said that's his favorite movie franchise of all time. And you know, he loved the first. Uh, five because they're all numbered uh, like perfectly two to five we all have roman numerals but then it, it was all ruined with the sixth movie called rocky balboa you like hey, just call it rocky six that's what it really is call it rocky balboa it's sort of like the first movie you're just adding the last name and you know he's just kind of uh i think kind of you know, like joking and everything, but just kind of like you know, why why is it why isn't it Rocky Six? You know, it's like, um, <laughs> but um, having watched all of these films here, um, it, this one, in many ways, is sort of like the first one in tone. Um, in a sense, um, we get to see a, a, a character of Marie from the first film. She's back, you know, now as an adult, and she has a son called Steps. Yeah, short for Stevenson. Um, and, um, you know, uh, Rocky's son's an accountant, um, but he feels he's in his shadow. Like, you know, a lot of things that he gets in life and some parts are thanks to his father to some extent or he's always and then he's also overshadowed because like his last name everybody like uh, compares him to um his father to some extent and he's like in a shadow and um you know that, that's something that he uh has to deal with and even later uh when um uh, Mason Dixon, who's actually played by a real uh, boxer, um, uh, Antonio Antonio Tarver. Um, uh, you know, they he's like the heavyweight champion, and um, his popularity is waning. And uh, in a way, to try and get uh, basically back some sort of good uh, publicity and from the public as well as just um, uh, doing something to just sort of like change the way people have uh, seen him uh, as of late. He uh, talks to some of the people who uh, help, uh, you know, like manage him and everything and how he's going to, you know, They should, uh, he should uh, fight Rocky Balboa. And a lot of this starts because of a uh, uh, computer simulation where uh, you take a, like the, somebody currently fighting, you know, like in boxing, and then somebody from, you know, years gone by, people who are retired, and then you go and uh, match them up and uh, like, see in the computer um, uh, who will win what based off of their skills. And, um, in that uh, Rocky wins and um, yeah it's 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 definitely interesting how um, he's able to get back into fighting you know he has a well, sort of the, gives a speech at the board where, where he's able to with the people giving out a license and uh to fight in Philadelphia for boxing, you know, um, and how, yeah, he's able to get, uh, a license to fight and how, uh, 
just that journey of just seeing how he goes like and realizes like he still has something left in him to fight and um he wants to just get rid of it um and on top of that you know um adrian is uh, has died between uh five and six um part of that was because you know originally when stone wrote a couple drafts of the script uh Adrian was there, but she was really just in the background. She would have like maybe like a scene or two where of actual importance, but you know, whereas in the first five, she's very important to Rocky and even the story overall. And this one, she wasn't uh, completely uh, just as important. She was just there. And so he and Talia Shire talked and agreed that the best thing to do would be to have her die between movies. And so that's what he decided on doing. And then, and from that, you know, you see him really reflecting on the past and he visits her grave pretty often. And, uh, He uh, just is really in mourning, and he just uh, uh, is reminiscing on all the old stuff that they uh, sort of like where they first had their date and uh, his old place or. Uh, he wanted her to trust him and she did and they went into his place and yeah all that's very emotional it's very very well done um, Bert Young of course is Polly again you know it's really just uh, Stallone and Polly the returning original cast um, you have archive footage of uh Talia Shire from the some of the previous installments, and you also see uh, in a moment a flash with uh, of a uh, Burgess Meredith. So even he's technically in this movie through old footage. Um, so in all these movies, he's in there. You know, if not, you know, physically there. You know, they've reused footage like in Rocky IV and in this uh, the sixth film, uh, Rocky Balboa. He's in it. Uh, roll footage and uh, I like how uh, these characters that are in it are still there basically um, and I know in Rocky 5 I mentioned how you know uh, you know Mickey being there in new footage for like a like a for like a flashback when he's in the gym and how, you know, that was a nice, that was a nice moment, you know. Um, but of course, you know, Burgess Meredith is a great actor, and um, Mickey was a great character. And uh, of course, by the time this was made, you know, Burgess Meredith had passed away. Um, so even if, you know, uh, he was still alive, you know, and he didn't, the character didn't die in Rocky uh, 3. I think it would have been fairly logical to some extent that he would have passed away as well. Because, you know, uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe he would have written him in there still and he would have returned. And uh, basically, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, with Rocky uh, going back to some of the old places he would go to and talk with Polly and you know he has a restaurant called Adrian's um, you know he uh, gives a, his son a speech of you know you know how life is going to be the biggest you know thing to beat you down in life and now you know people who just accuse other people of uh, their problems or, you know, 
they're cowards because you know in a lot of ways things happen in life that you don't want to happen and in various aspects it's their your own fault um, sometimes it is other people's fault you know preventing you from achieving what you like whatever it is you want to do in your life or if you have a certain goal and you can't get it sometimes it is people other people's faults like you know you might be doing everything you need to but you know sometimes somebody might uh, stand in your way or prevent you but um <clears throat> other times you know as he as rocky says to his son you know you know cowards go and blame other things blame other people for things not turning out the way they want um because you know he thinks it's gonna be embarrassing for his dad and then him as a result and how him fighting again and just how everything will, would likely turn out and how it's just not going to be good um for him because you know he's trying to do his best but he keeps getting either compared or his father has talked a lot about him and he's just sort of there and people just want to talk to him about his dead for the most part and he's just kind of like just tired of that and and that's understandable but you know he's like you know as soon as I start to do something good for myself you know really get to go somewhere um you know or ha have a little success of my own that doesn't involve you know his father oh well, well then you're gonna go and fight again and it's just you know, it's a very interesting and very good scene. And um, he said how he, uh, how, you know, uh, Rocky's like, you know, it doesn't matter how hard you get it or how hard you get it. It's about how much or how, it doesn't matter how you get it. Anyway, I think you all get the point. I, I, I'm clearly uh, screwing up the quote. Um, part of it is very late, so that's my bad. But still, um, you know, bottom line is it doesn't matter how hard you get hit. It's how much you can get hit, how hard you can get hit, and how much you can take. But, but, and I know I screwed that up, but and I'm not ever going to try to repeat that again because I'm going to just uh, screw up uh, horribly. But... Regardless, it's a very inspirational, like, speech, basically. You know, you get hit in life, and you, it's going to happen. doesn't matter at all what you do. You know, you can do the best things, and life will just smack you upside the head to the point where you're, you could, like, spin around and be completely shocked and dumbfounded as to what happened. But you have to keep going, basically. you got to keep going, and you have to not life uh hit you and knock you down if you do get knocked down you gotta get up you can't just stay there and be like all right i'm done um you know you have to keep going even if it's hard um but yeah uh just seeing how uh this new opponent i guess or in antagonist uh, you could call mason dixon um he's very well written i really like how uh stone wrote the character because it's not you know he isn't like a uh, apollo creed or uh uh clubber lang from the first three movies who are sort of like uh or have a very big ego and think incredibly highly of themselves. Like they're gonna, you know, gonna beat them no matter what. There's no, you know, there's not that kind of side to them. There also isn't like the with uh, Ivan Drago or Tommy Gunn. You know, having people use them in such a way to where like they're manipulated to some extent, and you know, in a way, you know, it's like you know they're being used could not uh, argue you know he's just a guy who uh, 
boxing wise he's like on top of the world he's a champ but people aren't but he has a reputation so people aren't totally you know happy with him at the moment and he's trying to prove that the reputation that he has now he either he shouldn't have or he's better than that and so it's really cool uh, to just see how these two guys are uh, come together to fight and how it's uh how all this uh, uh comes to be it's it's a it's a very it's a very good film and it's a very good conclusion to the rocky story although as we know there are still some uh, more films within this universe that are still uh, that have come out since and currently so the Rocky franchise isn't completely over and um, yeah it's 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 amazing how uh, in this 30 year journey because this came out December 2006 the first one came out December two, uh, 1976 so 30 years People still enjoy Rocky. And part of the reason this movie was made was because Stallone wasn't happy with Rocky V. He, you know, it's like, that's not the best way to end the franchise with. You know, if you're going to end it, you know, end it on a very good note. And, you know, and I think he did. You know, for the time, I think he ended this franchise on a good note. Again, it's still technically going on with spin-offs but you know it's uh it's still a good uh, uh it's a good it's a good franchise um i really uh enjoy the th enjoy the film for what it is and for what you know it's trying to convey with the characters old and new uh it's just a very good film. It's a very good story. Um, you know, uh, well, some of the uh, later installments of this franchise might have kind of gone a bit either over the top or maybe seemed cheesy at times or whatever the case may be. Uh, it's this film is excellent it's just a fantastic movie uh from beginning to end i really love it it's it's really good it's a fantastic film um and while it would have been great to see talia shire have brand new scenes um i definitely understand why the adrian character um they decided to have her pass away between movies Oh, so that kind of gives a jumping off point for Rocky because for this film because you know he still has something left in him and he wants to get it out but if Adrian was there he may not have ever had that real desire to do so um, you know he probably would have uh, kept a the restaurant is you know just keep it going as it had been because it seems like he, he's had that for quite some time from what's said in the film so uh, so you know good for him you know 1995 so yeah like five years after the fifth film um, though technically that movie was still in the 80s so definitely not movie wise in the timeline but uh for release wise you know 1990 was the fifth movie so 95 um but you know uh, this was a very good film um cuff and link are still in this franchise so that's cool he still has those uh turtles to this very day but then of course turtles uh live a long time so that's not all that surprising um, yeah, he gets a, 
uh, new dog that uh, Marie's a good steps uh, <laughs> name's uh, Punchy. Uh, Polly gets laid off, which was unfortunate. Um, Marie works uh, <clears throat> as a hostess to uh, Rocky's restaurant, uh, especially since uh, his the usual hostess is uh, is pregnant, as we see in the beginning of the movie, and then of course she's gonna you know deliver her baby and won't be you know working for some time uh, yeah uh, and then by the end of the movie uh robert uh robert jr he uh is with his dad at the end uh helping him train and everything and uh, is there at the ringside when he goes to fight you know he quit his job and uh like it wasn't really uh, <clears throat> uh, it really wasn't for him and uh, it's nice that the father and son are able to like reconcile and just uh, sort of like be together at the end you know be there for each other and it's uh, really nice uh, anyway this is a great uh, franchise um, Watching all these movies, it was really great to see all the way through, beginning to end. You know, it's been a while since I've done that, so this was really fun. Um, obviously, there's always a lot to say with these movies, but... Um, yeah, I don't know how interesting it would be, com be completely just going point by point and make like an hour or two long videos each of all these... Uh, all these films it might be interesting to some but probably not all um uh next week uh, next time i will uh talk about the two creed films um still haven't seen creed 3 but as i've mentioned earlier you know having not seen the previous creed films in the theater or even rocky balboa i see no real reason to jump into uh creed 3 and I've never seen it, you know, any of those previous installments during my lifetime on the big screen. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm going to be consistent in that. But I will see Creed 3 uh, when it's out on, like, Blu-ray and all that good stuff. So, might be a few months uh, from now or so. Um, but, yeah. Uh, when that happens, uh, that will happen. So, uh Next week, uh, the Creed films, the spinoffs. And uh, until then, I uh, hope all of you are doing well. I hope all of you are having a great day. hope you've all had a great week. And you all have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.